Well, welcome to another episode on the panel van. So we got a bit done, so I thought I'd throw one together. So Darren got started while I was away, and then um, we'll work you through the process. So welcome back. Okay, time's come to take the plenum off. Uh, so I'm just going around with a texter and marking all the spot welds that I need to remove. Um, there's a couple of ones that are sort of hidden that you don't really know about. Uh, there and along here, so I'll mark them all out and then start drilling and uh, we'll see if we can get it off. So take your time, wear the sand or use the wire wheel where all the spot welds are so you can go around and mark them with the, the texture because if you don't do that you'll end up missing some and then it's a bloody nightmare trying to get it off. So go around, mark them all, spend an extra hour or so to, to do that process because there's a huge amount of spot welds and pretty much you can buy like a spot weld drill and it's a flat face with a point and um, Darren got away with just using one to drill all of these out so you got to go around drill all those out and take your time and make sure you get them all Now if people are wondering about that cover, the radio cover there, it is a crack broken one. Um, I don't know how come it's still on there, but I know it's not a good one. I looked at that and went, wow, what's that still doing on there? But it's not a good one, so don't panic. So there's a couple of actual welds, so where that um, brace goes from the A-pillar along the top of the rail, there's um, three welds that are on the, the pillar there that need to be cut off. And we try and leave a little bit of that there so we know exactly where we're going when we put them back on again. And the top um, hat that goes on as well. So what he's doing there now, we just I've got some cheap um, wood chisels that we just keep sharpening all the time. And I buy the ones that have got the steel end on them so that you can give them a fair whack because sometimes you just can't quite get the last little bit with the four inch grinder. And then the same for levering and, and quite often as there that last one just wants to hold. Sometimes you just need to use a really sharp wood chisel to get that last little bit of one mil off. Now if you go to pull the panel off and it won't come off, don't keep sort of bending it backwards and forwards like he was doing there 20 times because all you're going to do is put a hole in the panel. It's normally because you haven't quite got the whole spot weld and you need to go back with the drill and take a bit more out. And then the same here, because there's always that little bit, he's just cutting off the residual of the spot. And then once you, it'll pop like that and it'll come off. So I think there's just one that perseveres on the corner here as well. So sometimes you've got to go back in with the chisel. So Darren's done quite a few of these, so getting quite good at it. Now that's the reason that we take the plenums off, because that's what tends to happen. This car did sit under a tree, but the majority of them are full of rubbish. And um, can be leaves, it can be just dirt. We've actually been very lucky with this car that it doesn't have a lot of rust. So it came out of Western New South Wales out in Ningen. So it's a very dry area, very low humidity. So we've opted to, um, to clean this one up. Now I wasn't there and Darren's just gone straight in with the, the Scotch Bright. I might've actually used some stripper on it first, but that's the end result. So that's been cleaned up with um, some paint stripper, some stripper disc, some wire wheel and then deoxidine, just waiting for me to get organised to get some paint in to, to fix it up. Now all of the little small parts I've taken off to the blaster, so in this particular case it's cost effective to do that, the, the, all of those parts you see now was a couple of hundred dollars. Um, when we're doing jobs for customers it's a no brainer because the hourly rate would absolutely kill it, but for a couple of hundred dollars I wasn't about to try and do that all by hand, and then what I've done is I pick them up the same day they're blasted and always wear gloves when you pick it up so you don't get any moisture out of your hands in, onto the bare metal. Bring them back, blow it off with pressure, high pressure air 
and then straight on with the vibrance, uh, the PPG vibrance epoxy urethane primer. Righto, so the plenum, so as you've seen, I've had it um, blasted and now I've put um, the PPG vibrance epoxy urethane primer on it. Now I haven't put a lot of primer on it because I want to be able to weld the bits and pieces back on it. So these little brackets and things from the factory are bare metal. And what we've done is drilled out the spot weld. So you can see there where the, the drill has gone through. So they'll now go back on and we'll line those spot welds up on the other side. Plug weld those back on. Same as this bracket. And as you can see, there's not a lot of paint here because I'm gonna weld it all on, clean it up, and then paint it again. So this is just about sealing it. So from the factory, this is just left bare metal. So the, re the reason I've taken them off is so that we can make sure that it's gonna last another 40 or 50 years. So there's the three of those to go on the inside. And then I'll go around then and hammer up anything that I think is damaged or needs a bit of work. So this car I think had a hit in the front and someone's done a fair bit of um, average panel beating on here because it would have been in position. So I'll, I'll repair that and then that'll get painted with um, on the inside with POR15, which is an American product, and it's made to go over bare metal or rust, um, or it can go over the epoxy. So that's gonna get painted once I get all those back on. So then, if I move over here, the underside of the plenum, this particular car is in extremely good condition. Normally there would be holes in these areas, so you can see a little pitted, bit of pitted rust here. So this was done uh, a couple of weeks ago now, so the blue tinge is because of the deoxidine that we use, which is a metal conditioner, just to keep the surface rust down. So that'll get one more clean up, and then we'll put the POR15 direct to the, to the bare metal. And the reason we do that is when we go to weld it back together, we know that that particular product can handle the heat and it tends to sort of go liquid and, and seal back up. So we'll paint that, we'll paint the underside, we'll plug weld it on and I'll obviously show you how we do that. Now, all the brackets that fit on the top of here, um, I've painted those as well. And once again, these were in extremely good condition. So these fit on there like that, and then there's another big long one on the outside. A lot of these parts are now available, so if you've got a really rusty one that you're doing, um, I'll just go and grab one of those and show you what I'm talking about. So these are a really well-made Australian product. So they're pressed in Australia. So as you can see there, it's a direct replacement. So if you happen to have um, a lot of rust or just getting it off, you've damaged it too much, you can buy those and we, we sell those. Um, have a look on our website on astledesign.com or through Facebook. And all of those little parts that make up that top section are now available. They, and they're a very, very good reproduction item. So I'll keep those in stock and once again these have been drilled out so drill it where the spots were so that I could actually plug weld it back on again. So all that's available. Fortunately for us we don't need to buy those so I will now um, with Darren organise all of that to be painted and prepped and then we can weld it all back on and we'll have that in a couple of issue time. So Darren's back on the MIG now, so set your MIG up fairly hot, um, you're really looking for good penetration and because you can see where the spot weld drills, when we've well drilled those out, when you put it back together you can line that back up in the centre of those, so that's putting exactly it back where the factory had it so it won't create any grief and obviously plenty of clamps to make sure that it's not going to move about while you're welding it. We found with this um, the vibrance epoxy that we don't have any issues welding around it. You can see how it sort of goes a bit red, um, and if anything, where it goes red, it's almost 
harder to actually sand off but I really like this product because I can work it like this and weld around it and then just sand it all up and give it another coat before we apply any fillers or whatever if there's fillers required which I will fill over these once um, it all goes back on. Righto, so some of these little rust areas we're just cutting a notch out bending up a bit so you can see a bit of one mil here just with a, a straight bend through it and then trying to stay away from our little curve here so we've left that in and what Darren's been able to do there now is to TIG weld that in and we've left this on it makes it a little bit easier so now you just cut that off through the back and we'll grind that up with a um, 40 grit flapper and then that'll be ready to go and there's a couple more of those to do so another one down here bit of rust there that we've got to do and another one up the top of you somewhere I think so the next process is to weld up all these holes and that way we'll be able to spot weld the drip gutters back on. And if you're going to do any of these repairs make sure you buy cold rolled uh, mild steel so it's 0.96 we'll call it one mil but it's 0.96 cold rolled um, steel and it's way better. You can buy zinc coated that doesn't rust in the workshop but it's not the same steel um, as the cold roll. The cold roll is much easier to, to work with. So he's got that other one on the bottom there. It's actually a little bit full there now. In probably the next program I'll do a couple of heat shrinks there just to pull. You can see it just sitting out a little bit just where he's welded it. So I'll do a little heat shrink on that and I'll show you how we do that. So what I'm doing here, the, the top of this car had an extremely thick paint on it and it was like the gutters had been repaired a couple of times or something because the roof and all that top section, it had anything up to six coats of paint on it. So I'm just using some 40 grit on my Merkin machine I'm um, trying to keep the dust down a little bit as well and then in a lot of cases that just lets the stripper get in and, and um, dig in a bit as well. So you can see here the amount of rings, it's like you know the, the bark on a tree just to give you an idea of how many coats. So I thought I'd grab a pencil and just mark it out to show you because um, it was really getting quite frustrating. So one, two, three, four, five, six coats of paint. I don't know why that would be, but it definitely had some paint on it. Might have helped to, re, um, to save the car when you think about it. So what we're looking at there now is um, just Darren's gone along with the MIG and added a bit of steel where the spot well drill's gone in to get the gutters off. They were fairly persistent. And we just go along there and then get the 40 grit um, sandpaper flapper disc and clean all those up. So we're back to our one mil to be able to spot weld them back on again. Righto, so I've managed to paint strip that roof. So I've just been using the old poly stripper, just a basic paint stripper, but the car had so much paint on it, it took quite a few goes to get it all off so once it got down to the original paint it actually you know blistered off the way I would expect it to so the next job now is these are what's left is all the rust so the roof had those big areas where the paint had all deteriorated and it had actually started rusting because it sat under a tarp for a long period of time under a tree so in general terms it's not too bad but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a gel to put on there. So first of all I'll use a, um, a scotch bright style pad like that. Just a flex of it stripper disc and I'll take the bulk of that rust off of the um, those big areas especially and those smaller ones and then I'll put a gel on there that'll actually eat the remaining rust back to pure metal so that we can seal it up and then work our way towards removing the roof off of the car so that we can replace the drip gutters. Mm. 
Well, what a couple of big days that's turned out to be. I decided I'd um, finish stripping the quarters and the roof and started doing the door openings. So the car's in such good condition, I really didn't want to blast it because I don't believe in blasting the outside panels. And in these door openings in here, they're actually in that good a condition and only have the one factory coat of paint on it. Just using the poly strip has been pretty quick to get that off. Um, some of the other areas like the roof has been really, really hard because it had so many coats of paint on it, but we have got there, well I've got there, and then there's just a few spots like that that I've got to run over with a scotch bright and a couple of old repairs, this one here, someone's done a really good job of fixing that, obviously had a dent there. So I've been using poly stripper and a coat of that, leave it for a good period of time and then use a scraper, something like that, that's nice and sharp, that's got a blade on it, rather than using something like this, which I'm using as well, but this particular one and what I've been doing is just resharpening it on the stone so that it doesn't get any little marks in it and that way it doesn't affect the panel and then I've been working away with all sorts of wire wheels and um, the scotch brod on those different pads so the wire wheel's been really good in around all these reverse curves and stuff so this side over here now I've actually run that big nine inch scotchy over that so you're virtually taking no metal off but I'm really stoked how good all these lowers areas are where normally you've got to go in there and do all those repairs. There's no issues there whatsoever. And the same in the door openings. It's quite amazing how good that is. So all of those up bits in there have been repaired. And the roof, um, I'll show you that later, but I've stripped all the paint off of that Friday night and then I've started using some of the, um, the rust removal gel, but I've run out, so I really can't show you much. So that's that one there. And I had some that had been previously used, so I've been using some of that up on the roof. And I'll show you that probably in the next episode, because I'm probably not going to get that before I get to finish this off. So I'm going to jump in now and scotch you this side, and then... Um, so I'm just using nice slow speed on a nine inch sander and um, with a strip disc just to clean it up and then I'm gonna deoxidine it all. So I thought I'd take the opportunity to just show you how this paint stripper works. So I've done obviously the big panels and I've started coming down around the door frame. So I'll just put some of this on here while I'm doing something else while I've got Louise here and it'll just show you how quickly this works on original paint. Now the trick with it is, is you need it fairly thick because if it dries out, it won't work. So, plenty on there. You can see there, it's starting to actually work already. It normally takes about 20 minutes to half an hour to really dig in. But obviously you can see there, there's not much paint in this particular area. So you can send out the blast to do this, but if you're doing a job at home, you know, it's 75 bucks for a drummer stripper in your own time. So because this is my own car, I'm tending to do the same thing. Just trying to get the best value financially I can for myself. It's interesting that this black from the factory is straight over bare metal. It's not even primed and no body colour. You'd think they would have body coloured it, but didn't even get a bit of that.
So I'll get in around here as well and see how it goes with some of this black. Because I've pretty much made up my mind I'm going to strip the whole thing here at home. I'll put in a rotisserie to do it, but rather than go to blast, And what I've found is a lot of this light paint will come off with a Y wheel, but it comes off a whole lot quicker and easier if it's already had paint stripper on it. It just softens everything up because it's all 40 years old, probably closer to 50 years old. Right, eh? So while that's doing its work, I'm going to now deoxidine this quarter to show you how I've done the other side. Okay, so I'm going to, this I've scotch brighted this with um, a big machine. So you would have seen it earlier, but on the nine inch pad, and it's a clean and strip pad, they call it. And it's like a black, heavy black scotch bright. Now I've done that because there was quite a lot of little, anywhere there was a chip in the paint, it had like a little bit of rust, surface rust. So by using the Scotch Bright, I'm going to get rid of those little niggly bits and the ones you're looking for that look like a spider web, because that's where it's starting to actually eat into it. And then you can see up here where it's gone brown. When I've taken the lead out of here with the Oxy, when you've got the heat in that area, it tends to just take either something out of the metal, whether it's the oils or whatever, and it rusts a lot quicker. So this is just surface rust. And what I'm using is deoxidine, so it's a phosphoric acid-based metal conditioner, and it actually changes the structure of the surface of the metal, and it'll stop it or slow down the surface rust process. So we'll probably do this two or three times before we get the paint. And up here, where I've wire-wheeled that rusty area, you'll see there it'll go brown when I start putting it on there as well. So this is mixed three to one with water. And I'm just using some Merlon, like Merck and Merlon, or Scotch Bright if you're using a different brand name. And I'm just going to give this a little clean up. And I'm just trying to make it so that it doesn't get a whole heap of surface rust. But see how that's taken the rust out of there? And if I persevered long enough in that one spot, I could get rid of the majority, if not all, of that black rust. So rather than convert the rust and leave it black, I'll show you over the, the process of doing the, this car, how we actually get rid of all of the rust. So the first job is go over it with your Merlon. And then I'm gonna do two or three more processes after that. And I've got three rags, one to take um, the bulk of this back off. The next one is a, a wet rag, just straight water out of a bucket. And then the last one is going to be a dry rag when I use the air hose to clean it up. So rather than do the whole panel, I'm just going to do this small area here to show you. how it all works. So that's the first process. So this is one I was using yesterday. So this one now, I'm going to take the bulk of that off. And I don't want that all running down the panel because it will eat in a bit. So I'm just going to take the bulk of that off. Obviously make sure you've got some gloves on because it is acidic and I've got the fan on down the back sucking the air through. Now I'm going to grab my bucket of water. So we're trying to get that all off there now. You can see how nice and silver and clean that is. And now I'm going to get my dry rag and the air hose.
Now if you decide you don't put the water over it and just dry it out, it'll go white like that. It'll leave a residue and that's quite, um, it drags the rag. So back here, beautiful and clean, it's got that nice gold look to it. Once it dries, but up here, where I've stopped with the water, it's got that white residue. So you shouldn't have the white residue once you're done. So I'm gonna start at the top, work my way all the way down, and then we'll end up with it looking like the other side. And then I'll do the same down through here as well. And that means I can leave this in bare metal really for a couple of months because I'm fully sealed in here and I don't get a lot of um, moisture or dew at night. Um, we tend not to get a lot of surface rust, but you can see the difference from this to this. And now that it's on there, it will actually stay like that for quite some months, unless you put your grubby little mitts on it and get all moisture out of your hands on it. So my next job is to weld this up. So I want to get it all clean, do my welding, and then we'll go back through the process and get it all ready to go for epoxy. Now, while that's been happening, Keep that camera going, Louise, because down here, you can see what's happening. So I'll put these gloves on, because this paint stripper goes pretty much straight through these black gloves. So I've got various um, scrapers and stuff I've been using. On the big flat panels, I've got the one with the blade in it. But like for here, pretty much anything. Now that's interesting, it's come off there, but there it really hasn't touched it, almost like I didn't put enough stripper on it. Now what I've been doing is just getting a rag and pulling out majority of that you see down here on the black straight down the bare metal now probably see how it's still bubbling probably gone a bit early with it here that's why it doesn't come off so sometimes patience is the thing Now see those scratches there, Louise? That's what I was saying in the earlier part of the video. If, if, you, if your scrapers hit something sharp and leaves a little dag, that's what you get. And if you run it over that stone that I've got in the back of the car, which is a sharpening stone for knives or, or chisels and those sorts of things, it'll stop all that fine scratching. Oh, I know you don't like that, Louise. Now, what I'm gonna do now, and I'm just going to put some protective gear on and I'm going to show you what happens when I hit that with a wire wheel. I just noticed as I walk back past this so that because I put water on the top bit here and it's run down there and I haven't kept going, I've gone off and done something else, that's what happens if it's just water, that's actually the surface rust starting straight away. So as soon as I hit that with the the phosphoric acid again, that'll take all that off and then I'll neutralise it and it'll be all fine because as you can see up here, there's no rust here but down here where the water's run down, it's basically left some surface rust.
So that's a really quick version of how that works. So stripper softens it, scrape off what you can, get rid of the, the residue of the, the stripper because you don't want it spraying all over you. And then that's a very soft wire wheel. You don't want the big twisted one. Uh, these are just from Bunnings, um, only like seven bucks. I've already burnt one of those out completely. This is another new one. And once I clean that off, I'll run that over. You can see that's been left a bit longer now, how much better that's all coming off. So I'll clean it off. One thing I didn't have there that you can use as well is just a little wire brush. Something like that. I'm trying to do this quick so that it doesn't turn into a two hour video on how to paint strip because most people probably know how to do that. Pretty much take the bulk of it off with that and then finish it off with a wire wheel. So that's pretty much a wrap for now. So we're just going to um, persevere along. Darren's only here a couple of days a fortnight nowadays. So I'll just um, keep stripping away and painting and organizing parts. And um, we'll bring it to you whenever we can. Whenever we've got enough stuff to make up an episode, um, I'll make sure to always put something together and we'll keep you up to date on where we're up to. So thanks for joining us again. Don't forget, if you like watching what we're doing, share it with your friends. Subscribe to the channel if you get the opportunity. And if you've got any questions, don't be frightened to ask because we'll always get back to you. So thanks for joining us and bye-bye for now.